Welcome to the Renegade Politics Podcast, where you'll understand politics from an expert perspective. On the web at renegadepoliticspodcast.com. It's a thing that nobody wants to do, I can promise you. And what's worse is that no one wants to even think about it. But you can't do that. You can't not think about it, obviously. And that's why I'm here today. Collecting signatures is, for some, a trivial exercise, getting 20 signatures from neighbors or friends or, or whatever. But for others, depending on what position you're running for, Congress, usually it's about 2,000, U.S. Senate, 10,000 signatures. So I'm going to talk about that today. And it's got some, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of a carryover to getting supporters to sign things, not just for running for office, I guess, if you're getting petition signatures, for getting people to sign on to a cause or something like that. So it's very much handled the same exact way. And because knowledge is power, I give you knowledge otherwise reserved for the rich and powerful right here on this program. RenegadePoliticsPodcast.com. I wanted to give first, and I'm going to do this, a relevant political media lesson based on what's going on right now. But a timeless lesson. It doesn't matter when you're listening to this. Because this stuff doesn't change. Have you ever wondered how did this happen when you see something in media or you see a campaign? Ted Kennedy, for example, we get the movie about Ted Kennedy, but you ever wonder, how did this guy become a U.S. senator when he killed his girlfriend? I, I don't get it. This is a classic case of how something happens. And a perfect illustration of how the political media works. What you think is the best thing is not always the best thing. What you think is the uh, worst thing is not always the worst thing. This actor on a TV show no one's ever heard of, uh, Jesse Smollett, it's someone, a black actor, went to Chicago allegedly paid people to beat him up and then pretend that they did it because he was black. The people he paid to pretend to beat him up were black. Uh, what ended up, what now is happening is this guy has turned a failed career on a TV show no one watches into being the possibly the next Colin Kaepernick or better. A hero. And I'll explain how this happens. Guy pr pretends, he, he says, oh, I want to be beaten up so that I can claim racism and talk about how I hate Trump and then be in the news media about, about it because nobody knows who I am and no one watches a TV show I'm on. Now everybody knows this guy's name, at least right now, as I do this podcast. And he now is primed to be the next voice or the primary voice for the anti-Trump and anti-police movement which is voiceless right now. Who's, who's leading that right now? You got nobody. Some washed up football player, Colin Kampernick, who nobody cares about. The best possible thing that could happen to this guy is what happened. He goes and he pays these people to beat him up because he's black. He gets caught doing it. He gets arrested. I guess he's getting convicted. I don't know what he's doing, getting tried. So a felony to do this because he lied and used the police as a way to try to whatever. But see, if... If it turned out he was beaten up for his race, well, then he's just a victim and he can go on TV and be a guest. And sure, he can maybe parlay that into some sympathy points, which is obviously maybe where he was going. But the smart money, if you listen to this program, the smart money is on getting caught doing it. And then the people who hate Trump think, wow, this guy is so passionate in his hatred for Donald Trump and his hatred for police that he's willing to get arrested. What a hero. Don't laugh. And don't be surprised if this guy is Jesse Smollett doesn't end up with his own talk show. That's how heroes are made on the left. That's the funny way things happen. You ever wonder how criminals end up in Congress? You look at how does a guy who was in jail end up? This is how that happens. Black Panther member, uh, Chicago congressman, I forget his name, now in Congress. So now you know the making of a hero on the left. 
Okay, enough of this. Let's get to signatures. What does it mean to collect signatures? What am I talking about? What is this guy talking about in certain states, most states, all states for federal office? To get on the ballot, you need to have a number of signatures. For U.S. Congress, it's, I, I believe, U.S. Senate, too. It's, a, well, actually, I think with everything, it's a percentage of the vo actual voters. So if there's, if for every thousand voters there are that voted in the last election, <clears throat> it will be, I don't know, 1%. So one per every thousand, one signature for every thousand voters, something like that. I think it's more than that, but you get the idea. That's generally how the rules work, how the law works. You've got to look into the rule, look into the law. Federally, it is regulated at the federal level, obviously. Locally, it's regulated at the state, possibly municipal level, depending on where you live. <clears throat> if you're going to run for office, first thing you need to know is do you need to collect signatures and how many do you need? And how do you do it? If you do a petition, it's the same thing. No on this or yes for that. You have to get signatures. I will say that the most valuable lesson I learned on this is actually from a labor union. I'll get into that later, and it's shocking because I'm a Republican, but the labor union taught me a lot of what I know about how to get signatures. I have personally collected probably close to 10,000 signatures in my life, maybe more, I don't know. And it started in my first... I don't want to get, again, it's not about me, so I don't, I tell these stories, but I, I leave out things on purpose. <clears throat> and I'm, I'm leaving out some stuff on purpose here. But we were up against a, a major deadline. It was a very big office and a very big deal in the media. And we would go out, and I've seen it all, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I've, I've, I've seen it all. We had to collect something like 3,000 signatures in two weeks or something, four of us. Uh, Here's what I'd say the best approach is, just to cut to the chase. And this is years of this. The absolute best approach, I've seen all approaches, I've tried all approaches, it is approaching the person, however you approach them, and I'll get into that later, and saying, excuse me, my friend is running for Congress, I was hoping he could sign this petition just to get him on the ballot. Excuse me, my friend is running for Congress, I was hoping you'd mind signing this petition just to get him on the ballot. Why, why am I saying that? Excuse me, people think you're selling them something they don't know. My friend is running for, you're making it personal. Congress, they know what Congress is. Oh, okay. Do you mind signing this just to get him on the ballot? The first question everybody asks when signing something, what, what am I signing? Just to get him on the ballot, just gets him on the ballot. Well, am I supporting him, not, not supporting him? You're just getting them on the ballot. Well, I'm the uh, other party and I hate this guy. Well, when you sign this, what you're doing is you're really just supporting the system that allows people to run for office. See how that works? It works well. <clears throat> I've gotten many signatures from people who don't like the guy that I'm, I'm with. Who will say, I will sign this just because I believe that he has a right to run. Or she has a right to run. And use that. You're just getting signatures. Uh, be brief. How to approach the person. And I, here I've seen, here's other things I've seen. Uh, excuse me, sir. I'm supporting, would you support so-and-so for the United States Senate? Well, now you're asking people to support someone. And before they support someone, what do they have to do? They have to, well, I don't even know him. You'll get that a lot. I don't even know this guy. Well, all you're doing is getting him on the ballot. Oh, okay. If you say that three times and they still are arguing with you, cut him loose. Go to the next person. I don't even know the guy. I can't support him. When you start out saying, hey, will you support so-and-so for Congress? Well, now you're asking him to support somebody, and now they have to go through this. Oh, who is he? What does he stand on this? Well, how about this? Well, I'll think about it. Are you going to be out here tomorrow? Don't make them nervous signing. And I'm not telling you to lie or mislead. All you really are doing is getting him on the ballot. It's not a support thing. And I'll tell you what to do with these signatures later on, and it might not be what you think. All you want is to get on the ballot at that point. It's all you're doing. So get on the, on the ballot. Get the signature and move on. What you're uh, supporting is important, obviously. One time I was leading an effort, an anti-tax effort, and it was a, a very – I don't even remember what it was. Oh, I remember what it was now. It was a trash tax, and it was in a, a community that I was living in. And I had kind of been in between big political things at the time. 
I started this, I believe I actually supported the local newspaper uh, through a downturn uh, at this point in time uh, with my, my effort, but whatever. So I was setting up at a supermarket, <clears throat> and I, I'd never seen this before. I was setting up at a supermarket, and I turned around as I was setting up. There was a line to sign this petition. I will never see that again either. A line to sign the petition. Uh, a woman was like juggling kids. Oh, I want to sign this. Why I'm telling you this is if your message is something people like, you're going to have a much easier time getting the signatures. And I don't mean just from people. I mean where you go to get signatures is a direct product of what it is you're getting signatures for. If you're getting signatures for something that's so popular that everybody wants it, you find the most high traffic area and you literally stand there. If you are trying to get signatures for someone that nobody really cares about or knows or whatever, the highest traffic, what you probably are doing is you're allowing people to just blend into traffic and just keep walking and ignore you. You're giving them a license to ignore you. <clears throat> if there's one person walking and you're just one person, really hard to ignore that person, isn't it? If there's 100 people in a crowd, you're, excuse me, are you in the red shirt? Oh, no, you in the purple shirt. Oh, wait a minute, you in the dress. That's a little harder to get somebody. So if it's very, very popular, people love it, just stand there where people are, and uh, you get the you get the message. And by the way, a message is better than a candidate because people automatically know how they feel. When you're asking someone to sign for a candidate, and I am beating this dead horse, but I want you to understand it because most people trip up. When you're asking people to sign for a candidate, they think you're asking for support. They really do. No matter what, even if you say, no, it just gets them on the ballot. Oh, okay, well, I'm not going to support this guy. I don't even know the guy. <sighs> it just gets them on the ballot. So wait a minute. So you're, this just gets them on the ballot? Yes, let me explain what happened. You sign your name. This goes to the Secretary of State. They look at your name. They go, okay, and there's a thousand others like you, and they go, he qualifies to get on the ballot, and then they take those sheets and they throw them away. Then the person understands, oh, 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 okay, okay, now I get it. See what I mean? And it's like that in everything in politics. People, they, they hear what they, they think they're going to hear, and they hear what they want to hear, and you've got to make it very clear. So now that I'm off whatever point I was trying to make, let me try to reel it in and remember what I was saying. Uh, message is better than a candidate. It's easier to explain. Uh, I have no idea what I was saying. So let me let me move on. But just I just it's more important that you understand that you need to keep repeating yourself than whatever I was going to say. You got to keep repeat. It just gets them on the ballot. Just get some. I would stand there saying that. Just get some on the ballot. Yep. Just get some on the ballot. Of course. Oh, I remember what I was going to say. Getting someone to support a message, they know what the message is. <clears throat> they know how they feel about the tax. Should taxes go up or down? Well, yeah, they know how they feel. You don't have to. When you're asking them, hey, support Al Alberto for Congress. Well, what is all about? Or who is Alberto? They want to make sure he didn't get arrested yesterday. They want to make sure he's not wanted. They make sure want to sure that he's what he how he feels about things that are important to to him. And they don't have that information. They don't want to get that information. They don't have the time for that information. And in the eight seconds it takes them to walk by you, you're never, never going to teach them about enough about your candidate to get them to actually want to support them. They might sign something if you guilt them, but the best approach. And I promise I'll move on after I say it one more time, is what? Just get some on the ballot. And if you don't, if they're not your friend, excuse me, sir, collecting signatures for Alberto for Congress, you mind just sign? He just gets them on the ballot. Could, could you just sign? We need 750 signatures by next week. If you're a registered voter, just uh, could you, do you mind signing? And that's the other thing. Let me bring that up with the registered voter thing. I don't do the registered voter thing because, first, it is a sales tactic because this is kind of what it is. It gives them an out. Oh, I'm not registered. Okay. Yep, yep, not registered. Uh, eight out of ten registered voters will tell you they are not registered just to get out of whatever you're about to say to them. So yeah, my opinion, when you say, oh, are you a registered voter? That's my favorite when people do that. Excuse me, sir, are you a registered voter? Uh, no. As they're going into vote, right, <laughs> for the voting place. <laughs> well, what are you doing voting then? Oh, I'm illegal. Uh, I'm just going to try to vote for my neighbor. So what happens when you get people who aren't registered is they just throw the signature out. It's just, it's worthless. But if you do this and know what you're doing, 
the, I don't know, 35 seconds it takes you to get the bad signature is probably just as useful for a, a number of reasons. First of all, someone's already signing. It's much easier to say, oh, excuse me, sir, I see this person signing here. Could, do you mind signing to get Alberto on the ballot? Now, because someone else is signing, because we're, you know, we just it's an old outage, you start a line and people will just get in line, right? That, that works, I think. Easier to get someone to sign. Oh, someone else is signing. Okay, well, what is this? Anyway, if someone else is signing, it must not be a con. That's what people are thinking. So go with that. My advice, just get them to sign. Uh, I don't know what the percentage is. 70% of America is registered or something like that. So, yeah, you might get three bad signatures out of every 10. But just get it and move on. Get it and move on. Standing on a corner, excuse me, sir, are you registered? Excuse me, sir, are you registered? Excuse me, sir. By the time you get to the 10th person says no, you could have gotten probably two valid signatures out of those seven registered voters that told you they weren't registered to vote because they didn't want to talk to you. Make it easy for them to sign. Just get some on the ballot. Hi, guy running for Congress. Just get some on the ballot. Can you sign here? <laughs> like, they don't even care who it is. They don't care who it is. No, it is not an opportunity to campaign. My friends will disagree with me. <clears throat> but it's not. Just to get them on the ballot. Uh, general demeanor, be nice. Be compliment complimentary. Don't look like, I don't know. You can dress up. If you dress up well, you can do it, I suppose. But then they're going to think you're trying to get them to convert to your religion or something. Dress comfortable. Dress unassuming. Try to smile. I never smile, so it's difficult for me. But you know, people who do this typically look like, uh, I don't know, political prisoners or people on work leave from, from jail or something or doing community service. Don't look like that, please. You're not going to – surprise, surprise. You're not going to get a lot of people. Most successful time I've done signature gathering is in a pair of three where we're all literally having a good time, just having a good time with it. We're, I guess, kind of making fun of people, you know, profiling people. I bet, I bet that guy's married to a woman half his age, that kind of thing. Try to have fun with it. Don't say that too loud. And maybe that helps. I don't know. Maybe it does. Nowadays, who knows? You may get arrested. I don't know. But if you're having fun, you actually do better if, you, if you're enjoying what you're doing. Or at least pretend to enjoy what you're doing. The story about my the union is when I was very young, I worked to... Uh, and disclaim here, uh, danger if you're a Republican. I'm a Republican. I've always been. You may be angry with me after this, but working conditions in a big company were very bad. And I helped organize, try to organize a union there. It, it, it failed, so. But I tried to, and I would have probably been the president of that union. And I learned a lot from these guys. These guys are pros. A guy who taught me, great guy. And what I'm trying to say is... He would smile. Hello there. You look lovely tonight. Hi, you want to sign here? We're just, uh, can I give you some information about the union? And at first, they would be so, they'd cross the street rather than to, to talk to you. But then after they see you three or four times and they're, how's the wife? Oh, great. Hey, how's that car? Is it still broken down? No, it got fixed yesterday. Thanks for asking. We're all just people out there trying to get by. So remember that. And if you can just quick get in and out of someone's way, excuse me, sir, what you're basically saying is, excuse me, sir, hi, I'm just standing here because I have to stand here to get signatures. A friend of mine's running for Congress. He asked me to stand here. We have to, I have to get 30 signatures today that I can go home. Do you mind signing here? Just It just gets them on the ballot. I'm not trying to ask. You're not supporting him. You're not promising to do anything. You're not going to say all that, but that's kind of in your mind. That's at the ready. And, it, and you know what? Some of that stuff, you could say that. If they're asking, yeah, so what are you doing? Well, I know, just a friend of mine, just I, we're all just helping him get on the ballot. He needs 30 signatures from each of us. So that's all I'm trying to do here. If you don't mind helping out, I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. Have fun in the supermarket or whatever. The laws and the rules on these things vary. I was involved in a major lawsuit that changed the state law in Massachusetts forever. excuse me, Supreme Court of Massachusetts, <clears throat> it was said that, what did they call this? Identical ballot? It had to be identical. And the reason for the rule was that if you have a, a, a ballot at the top and it says, uh, please, you know, the undersigned agree to support blank, with no name, for blank. And if you sign that, 
and then they fill something in later, that's misleading. Uh, that's probably illegal. But if you change things, and all the ballots look different, you change little things here and there, they didn't want that. Government didn't want that. So they passed this rule, I think it was administrative law rule, that said they've all got to be identical. There, so what happened was, I believe, a judge came along and said, well, you know, this has a stray mark, or this guy wiped his nose, and then there's a piece of something on the, on the page, so that's not identical, and they threw that out. Obviously, it's a way to throw out ballots for people you don't want on the on the on the uh, on the ballot right so research your laws and rules but at the end of the day I'm pretty confident in saying intent controls in law and electoral law is the most sacred I mean getting in the way of people who want someone to be their representative by signing a piece of paper that's dangerous dangerous grounds for someone trying to do so yes there's a lot of shenanigans as they say uh, in the old days of 20 years ago or whatever plus. And I'm sure that came out of places like Chicago and Boston, both places I'm familiar with, where they just, you know, oh, that's not identical. Uh, and that, that was the case. Someone just pressed it. You know, it's a stray mark. They called it a stray marker. If there's just, someone just tested the pen on the side of the ballot, you throw that whole ballot away. All the signatures on that piece of paper were bad. I don't think that exists anywhere else, any, anywhere now. Reason for the story is, be careful with these. Make sure that you got the right petition and it's the way the government wants it. They usually give you a sample and it is fill in the blank. You can do that. Just make sure you fill in the blank before you collect signatures. Some places, for talking about rules, some places you have to have someone uh, attest that, oh, yes, I, in fact, was the one standing there in the corner with this piece. Of so you go to, a, a, what is that, notary? It says at the bottom, I, Jim Jones collected these signatures from these 30 people, these 30 voters. And then the notary says, oh, are you Jim Jones? And he goes, yep, I did it. Here's my ID. And then they sign it. In there. That's a little weird to me, but some places do that. In that case, what you can't do is what I'm about to tell you someone I know did do, and it was successful. In Massachusetts, for example, people would just leave stacks of these petitions. Hey, I just left about 25 pieces of paper in the back where you please sign, you know, take it home, sign it, mail it into the campaign. So you come into the office, campaign officer, check the campaign mailbox. Here's a letter from Randy Smith. You open it up. Here's a ballot with just Randy and his wife. Oh, great. Okay, you got two signatures. There you go. Bang. Bam. I guess not bang. Bang, bam, boom. Maybe I should use boom. Can't do that with the notary. I don't think Randy is going to drag his wife down. No, Randy would just have to do it. Randy said, hey, honey, can you sign this? Okay, great. I'm going to sign it too. Now I'm going to go to the bank and I'm going to pay a dollar and I'm going to get this woman to notarize my signature and then I'll mail it into the campaign. Uh, ain't going to happen. I'll just tell you that right now. Don't wait around for that to happen. So it affects the way you do things. Uh, teams and expectations. I'm going to tell a quick story about, do I say the name? No, I'm not going to say the name. I was involved in a campaign for a guy who was nominated for U.S. president. And when he was representing, running for statewide office, it was me and his son collecting signatures. And I'm telling you, this was a, this guy is a very well-known person, nominee for president. At the time he was running for statewide office, still well-known, major market, me and his son, and maybe 18 people showed up. Don't feel bad if no one wants to collect signatures. Uh, 18 people showed up for this guy who was eventually going to be a nominee for president and could be president in the future. We don't know. Yeah, you probably know who it is. Or else, Mitt Romney. Fine. There you go. I don't know how I could get around that. Massachusetts, you're going to put that together. Mitt Romney got 18 people in a room. And it was all over the news. So I'm saying that to try to encourage you, but simultaneously have you set the correct expectation. Don't expect a lot of people to help you collect signatures. If you have it, great. Church, but the, the most organized campaign collection effort I was ever involved in had more than Romney was a guy who lost miserably for Congress, but he had the church backing him, his church backing him. I think he had like 35 people, but don't expect that. If, if you have that, you know you have that. 
And if you do have that, break them into teams of two or three. Or actually, you know what? Let them do whatever they want to do because they probably know more about collecting signatures than you do. But if you're like most people, you have two options. So you get as many people as you can, <clears throat> teams of two. You and the other, uh, you as a candidate is good with a person. You can do it by yourself. I always think that looks a little lonely. Hi there, uh, I'm running for, for Congress. It's just me out here. Can you sign this? I don't like that personally, but if you got to do it, you got to do it. You got to do whatever you got to do. Teams of two are the best. Uh, people don't like doing it. Two hours, three hours. Where do you collect? Here's the big money question. This depends on where you are. I have collected everywhere from the beach. I'm serious. The beach to supermarkets to malls to everywhere. The best place to collect signatures is Melrose, Massachusetts supermarket. <laughs> but no, I'm actually not kidding. A supermarket that opens onto a public street is the best place in the world to collect signatures, in my opinion. Constant people coming in. People are kind of off guard, but not so off guard when they're going to the supermarket. They're relieved you're not trying to sell them cookies. So it's the best place to do it. Team of two, supermarket. Some places in certain states, Massachusetts, I believe the rule is anywhere that's open to the public, you have a right to collect signatures. But other places, you're trespassing. Uh, if you're in a place where you're trespassing, if you're doing that, then you got to watch what you're doing. Public area, train stops, anything that's public, like a train stop, public area, public property, that's okay. U.S. Post Office, not okay. There is actually a special rule, and I found it after I was, this is kind of funny, I'm running a long time, but I actually was collecting at a post office, didn't know the rule. The police were called by the Postal Service. The police were backing me up. The police said, no, no, this guy can, this guy's collecting signatures for a guy running for Congress. No, you're not going to tell him what to do. Here's the postal guy in the police, and they're disagreeing. The postal guy is just like, okay, it's the law. And the cop goes, nope, it's not the law, and I won that one. But I later realized uh, there was actually a law. He, he was right. So sorry if you're listening. Uh, I do. I mean, he was actually sympathetic. Like, I agree with you, uh, but just, you know, it's the law, and I, I got to stand here to document it. So there's a special rule about post offices, can't do it. Other than that, any public area, you're probably fine, unless as long as there's not a rule. Remember, again, at the end of the day, boy, if anyone ever challenged that, I don't know. Because in in law, it's very hard when you, when you put a law in between your ability to run for office. That becomes a very, you know, I don't know. That's a tough one. I don't want to waste time on that. But remember, we won that one with the stray mark. That was ridiculous, and we won. And that had been law for a very long time. So don't give up hope. Best place, supermarket. Train stop, you got to be quick. Three people, four people is ideal for that. Teams of two or four. If you're in a crowded area like a train stop, every once in a while there's a 1,000 people getting off the train, try to get four people there. Two teams of two, one on one side, one on the other side of the, of the platform. In a city, that works. In a city... If you have a public street in front of a post office, you can collect on the public street as they walk into the post office. Most people going to a post office are registered to vote. You, you can probably tell who they are. Other places, uh, collecting door-to-door -door is, depends on how many, how many signatures you need. I don't really like that method because you're ding-dong, you got to talk to them, they want to yap with you, it takes a long time. It gets to be a bit much. So I would recommend against knocking doors unless you just need like 200 signatures. Then that's probably the best thing. If you're running for a small thing, a small office, go ahead, <clears throat> break my rule. Go ahead and campaign while you're collecting signatures. Hi, can I just leave this with you? Fine. But if you need 1,000 signatures or 2,500 or 10,000, don't do door to door. Unless you have no other place to go, then do it. But you got to do it 6 p.m. or 5.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. Can't do it too late. People get mad. You can't do it when they just get home. They get mad. You can't do it when they're not home. Obviously, if you can get into an old folks' home, that's great. It's hard to do the signature collecting. You've got to just kind of use your your area knowledge. Ask your local professional people who know the area, or your local townies, or whatever. Where do I go? Be creative. Don't be afraid to be creative. Ask for permission. Don't be afraid to ask a store. If it's Walmart, maybe. Just call the manager. Hey, do you mind if I stand out here and run for Congress? Do you mind if I stand out? They might say yes. I've heard of that before. So who knows? Try it. 
Renegade Politics Podcast at gmail.com. You can email me. I will answer Renegade Politics Podcast at gmail.com. I just did the email twice. The website is Renegade Politics Podcast.com. I'm also on Twitter. So get out there, get signatures, have fun doing it, or at least uh, try to look like you're having.